गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार आई होप यू ऑल आर गुड एंड गोइंग थ्रू दिस सीरीज ऑफ लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस सिंस लास्ट कपल ऑफ डेज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सेवरल टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू दी ऑप्टिक्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई explain you about the refraction through the spherical surface this topic is very much related to the next one that is refraction through the thin lens and that gives us a very important relation known as lens makers formula lens makers formula is the formula used to design the lenses of desired power so you will understand that what is the importance of refractive index of the material of the lens and refractive index of surrounding as well as the reading of curvature of the two spherical surfaces so let us begin with this new lecture related to lens makers formula keep watching keep learning so let us begin with this new lecture related to lens makers formula in this lecture we will discuss about the design of lens how this lens is designed with the help of lens makers formula to understand this we are considering a convex lens and it is having two spherical surfaces the center of first spherical surface x m y is c1 and center of the second spherical surface x n y is c2 o is optical center as usual uh, let us consider a point object p on left side of this lens then we can have two incident rays one is obliquely incidenting on this first surface x m y if you join this point to the center of curvature of the first surface you will get the angle of incidence theta i this ray would refract and bend towards the normal and incident on the second spherical surface if we join this point then again this will be normal this time the ray is entering from denser to other medium so it will bend away from the normal if it had not been refracted from this second surface then you would get the image i1 at this location but since it is refracted so the image is formed at this real position i this i1 will act as virtual object for x n y surface the derivation of this is very easy let the refractive index of surrounding is mu1 and refractive index of the material of the lens is mu2 so that mu2 is greater than mu1 we will use the result of previous uh, lesson we discussed about reflection at a spherical surface so if we talk about 
the result of that lesson and how it is useful in this one so we can write the equation directly for refraction at x m y we can have mu 2 minus mu 1 upon mc1 is equal to mu2 upon mi1 plus mu m upon pm it is very easy the last derivation was having the same uh, kind of ray diagram only the difference was it was having only one surface but now we are having two surfaces so for the first surface and the relation was mu2 minus mu1 upon r and r is radius of curvature of the first surface and that is denoted by mc1 here so mu2 minus mu1 upon mc1 is equal to uh, there it was mu2 upon v and v is what image that image is i1 for the first surface so mu2 upon m i1 plus mu1 upon object distance and object distance for first surface is uh, pm so mu1 upon pm this we can write from the concept of reflection at a spherical surface when it comes to the second surface for refraction at x and y then you can see the relation would be uh, here the term m i1 is virtual term it is not really existing so for the second surface since it has become the object so that equation can be written in the similar way mu2 minus mu1 upon nc2 nc2 is radius of the second surface as mc1 was the radius of first surface is equal to mu1 upon ni ni is final image minus mu2 upon ni1 here the negative sign is because the refraction at the second surface is quite different in this the ray is uh, entering from denser to rarer medium an object is lying on the right side so if we go in detail the same derivation as we had done in the last lecture we would get this result mu2 minus mu1 upon nc2 is equal to mu1 upon ni minus mu2 upon ni1 now we have two equations for the two refraction cases at the first surface and at the second surface if we add these two equations it's the derivation is quite simple if we take 1 plus 2 we would get mu2 minus mu1 upon mc1 plus mu2 minus mu1 upon mc2 is equal to mu2 upon mi1 plus mu1 upon pm plus mu1 upon ni minus mu2 upon ni1 you can see from the diagram that these two distances mc1 and nc2 mc1 is equal to 
प्लस आर वन बाय द यूज ऑफ साइन कन्वेंशन एंड एंड टू इज माइनस आर टू सो इफ यू रिप्लेस देन म्यू टू माइनस म्यू वन अपॉन आर वन प्लस म्यूटो माइनस म्यून अपन माइनस आर टू इज इक्वल टू म्यूटो अपन एम आई वन प्लस मी वन अपन पी एम प्लस मी वन अपन एन आई माइनस म्यूटो अपन And I one. So, what will we get the next step? Mu two minus mu one is common. It would be one upon R one minus one upon R two is equal to mu two upon M I one. Plus mu one upon P M. Plus mu one upon N I. Minus mu two upon N I one. Uh, since all the distances are measured from the optical center. Therefore, M I would be M I one would be O I one P M would be P O N I would be O I and N I one would be O I one. Then. This equation would reduce to mu two minus mu one, one upon r one minus one upon r two is equal to mu two upon o i one plus mu one upon p o. Plus mu one upon o i minus mu two upon o i one. These two terms would be cancelled, so it will be converted into mu two minus mu one one upon r one minus one upon r two. Is equal to mu one upon p o plus mu one upon y. Mu one is common from the right side, so you would get one upon p o plus one upon y. Left side is as it is mu two minus mu one one upon r one minus one upon r two. If we divide this mu one to the left side, then mu two minus mu one upon mu one one upon r one minus one upon r two is equal to one upon p o plus one upon o i. Then you can see. Mu two one minus one. If you separate this, mu two upon mu one is mu two one, 
and mu1 upon mu1 is 1 so it comes to mu2 1 minus 1 bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 uh, is equal to 1 upon po plus 1 upon oi now just see these distances in the diagram in this po po is minus u and oi is plus v so we can replace here for po and oi mu to 1 minus 1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 is equal to 1 upon minus u plus 1 upon v so if u is infinity v is equal to f that we know very well if object is at infinity then all these terrible rays are converged at the focus and that distance from optical center is focal length then mu to 1 minus 1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 is equal to 1 upon and infinity plus 1 upon f and 1 upon infinity is 0 so it comes to mu to 1 minus 1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 is equal to 1 by f so 1 upon f is equal to mu to 1 minus 1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 this relation is known as lens matrix formula and it is used to design the lens whatever power or focal length of the lens is desired accordingly the values of refractive index and the radii of two spherical surfaces is considered so this is what lens Macros formula why because lens is designed by using this formula so in this lecture we discussed about the refraction through the lens in different way and we established the relation between focal length of the lens image distance object distance and uh, uh, radius of curvature but finally we found the relation between focal length and radius of curvature of the two surfaces in terms of refractive index of the material of the lens so this formula is known as lens makers formula be very careful r1 is always positive and r2 is always negative in this formula and moreover since we have taken convex lens here so you should not uh, consider that this formula is applicable for convex lens only it can be used for both convex and concave lenses as well so I hope you understood the topic and uh, the things are clear to you uh, we will meet very soon in the next lecture keep watching keep learning thank you Thank you.